evening and welcome to the 2020-2021 State of the School Address for Villa Joseph Murray High School. We look forward to presenting to all of you the updates from this past school year as well as looking ahead to next. This evening we will have some question and answer time at the conclusion of the presentation, so if you wish to ask a question at any point, please utilize the chat option. Depending on which version of Zoom you're utilizing, the chat feature will be located either at the top of your screen or at the bottom. Again, these questions will be answered at the conclusion of the event. We will begin this evening with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, O most chaste spouse of the Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who implored your help and sought your intercession was left unassisted. Full of confidence in your power, I fly unto you and beg your protection. Despise not, O foster father of the Redeemer, my humble supplication, but in your bounty hear and answer me. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. Blessed Mother, pray for us. Mother Maria, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I am happy to say that we did survive our COVID-19 school year. After last summer's multiple Zoom and in-person sessions, we did successfully have five days of in-person instruction. We adhered to all the guidelines that were in place, everything from temperature checks to mask wearing, social distancing, backpacks, uniform and non-uniform days, enhanced cleaning protocols, everything that was thrown to the students and staff, and they succeeded. We had to revamp activities and events. We had multiple events over numerous uh, days, such as masses in the pack, in the gym, live stream to the classrooms. We had proms under tents. We had plays and mu musicals that were over multiple nights and weekends so that we could accommodate smaller crowds. We had sporting events with and without spectators, club meetings on Zoom and in person, service opportunities that were done at home, brought into the school, and then delivered to the service sites. We had Hopathon, Spirit Days, our Guardian Galas, an in-person baccalaureate, uh, and lots and lots of boxed meals. So on behalf of all of us here, we want to thank you for a successful school year, even amidst the pandemic and the COVID-19 scenario. Now, Looking at some of the highlights of this year, um, first and foremost, I'd like to talk about our AP administration. We had 21 AP courses this year with 143 students registered for 288 total exams. That is a record number for us. We also have four diocesan scholars for next year. Uh, the diocesan scholar program allows selected seniors to go to college courses after school hours free of charge, and then they get credit that they can use in the future. We have continued to use our Blackboard emergency communication, and we will use that throughout the school year um, and summer as well for next. This is just the one we use when there are snow days or any reasons that we need to communicate with the families. You'll get a phone call and a text message. For next year's course scheduling and selection, um, just some updates. We had new courses that ran this year. We had our Theater Tech Practicum 2, Environmental Sustainability, Advanced Portfolio 2, American Civilizations 2. We offered honors pre-calculus last summer. Uh, we had our Young Adult Literature component that was added into our English department. Uh, we had Project Lead the Way end of the year assessments, and we even had a perfect score on the National Latin exam this year. Looking at next year, we have new courses in Honors Reality vs. Fantasy, Honors Women in Theology, Honors Creative Expressions, Civil Engineering, Aerospace Engineering, a band orchestra instrumental course that will be during school hours as opposed to before school. We have Music Theory Instrumental 2, AP Music Theory 2, and Ethics and Social Justice. Looking at next year's classes, our average class size is 11 students. We have classes that range from one to about 20 students, and our student to teacher ratio is eight to one. Now that's student to teacher. We also have our staff to student ratio, which is five to one. So we're really looking great with our numbers. We had some new clubs and organizations this year, as well as some that were reinstated. So we were able to add our bullet journal club, as well as our girls who game club. And No Place for Hate, which was popular many years ago, had a refresh this year, and I'm happy to say that that one is thriving and will continue. Report cards will be mailed in the next week, and if there's any obligations, uh, we will be sure to contact you about those. 
And at the end of the summer, usually around the last week of July, first week of August, course schedules and summer mailings will go out. They would be the course schedules that include the teacher's names, classroom names, and so on. For parking, Mrs. Brown will be reaching out to the seniors the first week of August, and that will begin the registration and assigning process. Spots will be assigned on a first come, first registered basis, and we will have an increase in enrollment, which I'll touch uh, base on today. But because of that, there is a possibility that we will only be able to offer po uh, parking spots to seniors first. Then we will make the determination after seniors have a spot, who else can register for those. We also are looking at implementing two new key features next year to our curriculum and content. First and foremost is because of COVID and some protocol changes that could be in place, uh, we are adding back in what used to be called our homeroom period. It will now be known as an advisory. And the advisory period is a time when students will be able to work on items that are needed, see teachers, have club meetings, get some of the uh, extra events that happen during the school day in during that time, as opposed to taking away from instructional time. Students and families will hear more about that at the end of the summer. We also have an internal committee working on the profile of our graduate. Again, this is a committee that's run by internal staff members as well as members of our board of directors and our ed programming committee. All of these uh, ideas of a profile of graduate and advisory uh, class really go hand in hand with our strategic plan, which you'll hear a little bit about later on. Um, and it continues to utilize many of our subcommittees of the board of directors. Over the summer, uh, if you need to get a hold of anybody, please feel free to email myself or Mrs. Schuster, and we will be sure to direct it to the teacher um, at the appropriate time. Students are welcome to email teachers directly, but just keep in mind that they may not see their emails every day. Mrs. Schuster and myself will be in the building almost every day throughout the summer, so it'll be much easier to communicate with us than it would be um, to wait for a response from another individual. We are going to be having an increase in enrollment. Uh, we are happy to welcome many new students next year. Uh, we have a variety of grade level transfers. I will go over our numbers momentarily, but with the increase in enrollment, we also have increase in staff. So we are able to hire some new teachers. So next fall, when we do reinstate our back to school night, I'll be excited for you to see some of the new faces that are joining us. In addition to new teachers, we also will be hiring a new guidance counselor to assist with the increase in enrollment, as well as a new position known as the Dean of Academic Affairs. So Mrs. Brown is our Dean of Student Affairs. Mrs. Brown handles a plethora of uh, in, uh, things going on at Villa, such as transportation, clubs, study halls, everything related to the students and an activity-based um, area. This Dean of Academic Affairs will assist myself, as well as the department chairs and teachers from more of a curriculum standpoint, professional development standpoint. Um, they'll also assist guidance and mission and ministry. So we are very excited about this. Please look for information next week on an announcement related to this position. I will be taking a brief leave uh, in the fall. Uh, I am expecting my third son. As I continue to joke, God uh, lets me handle female students all day long at the high school age. So he has decided to give me three boys at home since he knows I already deal with the, uh, the female students. So I will take my leave at the end of September. Um, and at that point in time, our Dean of Academic Affairs, as well as the administrative team, the department chairs, Mrs. Brown, Mrs. McCarthy, Mrs. Perez, Mrs. Schuster, it will be a seamless transition for my leave of absence. And we will make sure that everybody is aware of who they can go to if there are any concerns or questions. Um, this is my third time taking a maternity leave, and I can tell you that the other two times were a success because of the support of everybody else. As far as next year's protocols, here are some of the protocols that we already know uh, will be in place, but remember, with this COVID-19 pandemic, we know that many things can change abruptly, and our hope is that the pandemic is starting to go in the right direction. So as of right now, masks will be optional unless the students are placed directly next to each other. So thinking in terms of a lab scenario, we would have two students side by side. We would ask them to put their masks on if they cannot spread out even slightly. Um, but again, that's the protocol as of today. This could change by the time August is here where masks would be completely off. Um, but again, they are optional based off of comfort level of the student and staff member. We will continue to utilize backpacks. 
We will follow any All right, so we just had a minor hiccup, but I will continue where we left off. Um, we will be utilizing backpacks next year as well. Um, and as far as uh, the way the desks will be seated, we do look like we will be able to have the desks facing each other. Again, these protocols will change throughout the summer, uh, but we are very hopeful that uh, all of these items um, as far as COVID-19 go, work out properly. Um, and as far as, uh, I apologize when that screen just went off, we lost our place here. Um, as far as other COVID-19 protocols that we already know, um, we will not be going virtual unless mandated. Uh, and then we also will have possible increases in cafeteria seating uh, as well. Uh, as far as um, any of the other items, that we have such as um, campus ministry and admissions and whatnot. Uh, let's go to some of those. So for campus ministry, just to keep you in the loop, we have been very impressed with the ability to live out Villa's mission of always more, always better and always with love. Villa students truly are one of a kind gems. They're always willing to give their time and talents to help our community. And it is their desire to know God and serve his people that really helps us to add more experiences for them. This year, 100% of our students participated in the faith life of Villa through school-wide masses, prayer services, and class retreats. We had 190 leadership opportunities that were offered. We had over 40 optional faith and service programs that were offered. We intentionally provide a variety of opportunities for our students so that they can expand their experiences with their faith, to get to know our beloved Sisters of St. Casimir, to grow in their personal relationship with God, to engage with the Villa community, and to serve their neighbors locally and globally. Um, we were able to utilize uh, some of our regular locations, such as the Sarinelli House this year, um, as well as dropping off items to Twining Village. Looking ahead to next year, there is a natural progression for students who are interested in service. So we hope that if they start out by something like the two hour nature retreat, or maybe the Serenelli House, that they can then eventually work their way up to an overnight junior immersion retreat and maybe lead a class retreat down the road and eventually serve overseas, maybe in Haiti. This school year, Mission and Ministry was fortunate to have the assistance of four dedicated teachers that moderated and helped enhance our community service corps our Catholic Relief Services and Retreat Programs. In addition, we had 20 other chaperones who assisted with all the service events we had on site. One of the highlights of this year was our Hopeathon. This was a student run uh, uh, participation where we had over 60 captains. We had 230 students participate, including some of our transfers. We had over $95,000 raised for bringing hope home and Drew's hope. That is absolutely phenomenal. And all of our students did this in honor of their Villa sister, Maria Middleton. Looking ahead to next year, we are working with our student leaders to continue to find creative ways to meet the needs of our community. And we hope to bring back our overnight retreats and service programs. From an athletic standpoint, we continue to offer 15 varsity sports. I wanna focus really on the fall sports that are upcoming. For our fall athletes, the season officially begins Monday, August 16th. Uh, winter and spring sports, obviously you will begin in November and March uh, respectively. But for the fall athletes, um, don't forget there are athletic fees for each sport. These fees help support coaches stipends, transportations, official fees, equipment, rentals, things of that nature, field maintenance. Um, and all of these items are located on our website with the um, uh, athletics tab. Now for fall athletes, because of COVID, there is still obviously some uncertainty based off of PIAA and whatnot. So we urge you to stay informed with dates and deadlines and all the necessary forms just by checking out that Villa Athletics page um, throughout the summer. Impact baseline testing for all athletes desiring to play a fall sport uh, they will be conducted online. So those baseline testings um, 
you will see information for those. The concussion education presentations will be available also online this summer. Registration for fall sports, they will be open around June 20th. Uh, and the deadline for fall sport registration on family ID will be August 11th. One major change for all athletes, the PIAA form that you take to the uh, doctors with you for your physical, previously you used to take section six. Please note, PIAA has made a change. It is now section seven that you take with you to your doctor's appointments. But again, just check the website um, for the athletics tab for any updates and we will obviously keep you informed as well. From an admission standpoint, uh, let's take a look at those numbers that I uh, referenced a little bit earlier. So our current enrollment for next year is at 402. We have a senior class of 130, a junior class of 97, a sophomore class of 103, and a freshman class of 72. So a lot of our increase there is from transfer students. In June, um, right now, St. Basil's Academy in Jenkintown will be closing. And as a result, Villa is welcoming 77 students from their school. That's about 26 sophomores, 21 juniors, and 21 seniors that will be joining our um, school year for next year. We did welcome some transfers from St. Basil's in January of this past year as well. And as a result of these, we actually have increased our presence in Philadelphia and Montgomery counties. We still are offering our summer camps. So if anybody is interested, registration is still open for the EDGE, SOAR, Goal, Opportunity Week, the post-pandemic prep uh, for soccer, rowing, and volleyball athletic camps as well. Uh, we had a great seventh grade recruitment uh, uh, season. So we had our early candidates program. We had 148 students take our seventh and sixth grade practice test back in February. We had multiple families attend the Rise and Shine, 73 that attended our Twilight Tours, and 25 that attended our Zoom Q&As. From a technology standpoint, just to highlight some of the big things that are coming up or that we did this year, we're obviously very committed to the next step in internet service provisions. And over the summer months, we are actually upgrading the internet to a dedicated fiber service. We were successful this past August when we trained all of our new students on our Canvas and our Microsoft Office 365 accounts. We did this in preparation for the school year. We will provide the same training in uh, the start of this upcoming school year for all new students as well. In addition, the campus-wide Wi-Fi system will expand with additional access points. Think back to years ago when everybody only had a cell phone on campus. Then a little bit while later when we became bring your own device, we had students with a cell phone and a laptop. Now we have cell phones, laptops, and um, uh, smartwatches. So because of all these devices and the high volume of connections, it requires additional support. So we are keen on getting those Wi-Fi system access points put in right away. And over the summer months, the servers for our networks will be upgraded with all of the standard uh, software and hardware. As far as uh, communications goes, uh, I'm happy to share that social media for us, our, our accounts are growing every day. Thank you so much for tagging us in all of your accounts um, and for sharing the post and always using hashtag alwaysvilla. You are our greatest marketing tool and we appreciate every single one of the photos you post and the stories you share across social media. Continue to do that. We have accounts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Vimeo. Um, we also continue to send out uh, updates weekly during the school year. We will be moving from our care plan page. So the reason we're going to uh, start to step away from the care plan site page next year is because this should be used only in reserved um, emergency situations. So like an emergency response, but all of the information that we would need to use for anything will still be located on the website under the appropriate tabs. We'll still communicate via the website, via weekly calendars, via weekly email updates, and also in an effort to get all of our school emails out of some of your junk email folders. Again, we know it's not intended to go there, but we know it happens. We are thoroughly exploring different alternatives for how this emailing will take place. Some websites, 
have updated um, over the school year, so we will continue to make changes and streamline as well. Uh, strategic plan was referenced briefly, and that will come up again later. Um, just to let you know, our strategic plan for anybody that wishes to look through it can be found on the website at bjmhs.org slash strategic plan. And one final thought from myself, from an alumni standpoint, um, and as an alum of Villa, I was thrilled this year with our mentoring program. We have an alumni mentoring program where 22 students were matched with alumni in fields such as business, medicine, education. Um, we will continue this program in 21-22. Um, and also we have an alumni legacy uh, student uh, uh, orientation every uh, back to school mass. This year we moved it a little bit later because of COVID, but we are happy to say that in this school year, we recognize five students in the freshman class who are legacies. That means they are the daughter or granddaughter of a Villa alumni. That brings our total in the school currently to 19 alumni legacy students, which is incredible. So we're very grateful for that. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to back up to this slide and have you hear next from Mrs. McDonald. Thank you, Mrs. Carr. During her presentation, Mrs. Carr touched briefly on alumni involvement and communication. Two key elements of advancement at Villa or any private school. Even while we dealt with the challenges and restrictions of COVID-19, Villa continued to communicate with our students, current and past parents, and our alumni. In October, we launched, launched the alumni Facebook group. Already nearly 600 alumni have joined. If you have an alumna or you know one, I know I encourage you to check it out. In April, we held our second alumni association election. I'm proud to announce that our association executive board positions are as follows. Our president is Stephanie Shortall Schlegel, class of 01. Our vice president is Caitlin Files, class of 06. Our treasurer is Danielle Prunetti, class of 2012. And our secretary is Becky Flynn Hensel, class of 99. I know these women are looking for alumni volunteers to assist in planning networking and professional development programs. Again, if you're interested, you're welcome to contact me or anyone in the advancement office. As Villa's tuition covers only about 85% of what it costs to educate a student at Villa, we're grateful for the continued generosity of our alumni, current and past parents, students, and faculty and staff to our Always Villa Fund. As you may remember, our Always Villa Fund was formerly known as our Annual Fund. This fund enables Villa to continually enhance our curriculum, provide financial aid to those demonstrating need, maintain the school's facility and campus, and support the professional development and growth of our faculty. As we near the end of our fiscal year on June 30th, we're about $25,000 short of reaching this year's goal of $160,000. We know that many families continue to struggle with financial losses as a result of the pandemic. Please, if you've not donated this year, or if you're in a position to increase your gift, we would be grateful for your assistance. You can give online at www.vjmhs.org slash give slash annual fund. You can also donate through Venmo using at Villa Joseph Marie and the code 0560. Or you can plainly mail a check to the school. To date, more than 100 donors have pledged nearly $4 million to Villa for the construction of our beautiful Performing Arts Center and the up upcoming development of our STEAM Hallway and Media Center. During this fiscal year alone, Villa received nearly $400,000 in pledges from 17 donors. We're looking for new supporters of Villa for the future. If you're interested in partnering with Villa for our GEMS, please contact me in the advancement office. Federal funding, thankfully, has assisted Villa in the payment of some of the extra expenses associated with having in-person instruction during the pandemic, including social distancing, 
cleaning and sanitizing, virtual instruction, and technology. Over the course of this year, Bella has applied for and been awarded the HB 1210 grant, the Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Grant, and the Emergency Assistance for Non-Public Schools Grant. 100% of these funds have been and will continue to be used to maintain the highest level of instruction in a clean and healthy environment. We're grateful to the Bucks County IU and Council Rock School District for the administration of these grant funds. Like most private schools in the area, Villa awards aid to families demonstrating financial need. Historically, that aid came in the way of tuition discounts without any real financial backing. In the past three years, however, Villa has grown its funded financial aid by more than 1,000% thanks to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and more than 25 donors who choose to support Villa Joseph Marie through the Educational Improvement Tax Credit, also known as EITC. Through EITC, families and business owners can redirect their tax dollars, dollars they're already paying, to Villa to be used as financial aid rather than sending it to Harrisburg. Donors can choose to make a one or two year commitment to EITC. For a one year commitment, a 75% tax credit is received. A two year commitment receives a 90% tax credit. For instance, a $5,000 gift to Villa's financial aid program made through EITC will effectively cost the taxpayer only $325. This is a win-win for the donor and for Villa. And it's so easy to participate. I and my family have participated in this program for the past two years, as has Mr. Kardish and his family. If you'd like more information on the EITC program and how you can make a real impact on our financial aid for our GEMS with very little out-of-pocket cost, please be sure to check it out on our website, just search EITC, or contact me in the advancement office. You see now on the PowerPoint presentation that the next bullet point is need for parents. And it's true, we do need our parents, but we also need our alumni, our past parents, and our community. We need you to be involved. Students whose parents are involved in their school have a greater likelihood of academic and social success. And we need our alumni, our past parents and community to support Villa with your time, your great enthusiasm, and yes, your financial resources. We need you to invest in the future of our GEMS. Your investment in our girls is an investment in strong future leadership in business, medicine, politics, education, in the home, and so much more. Not sure how to get involved? Call me. Call Mrs. Carr. Call Mr. Kardish. Just call. I would now like to turn the meeting over to Mr. Kardish. Hi, everybody. It's Tom Kardish. I'm uh, giving you the president's outlook uh, for the state of the school of dress. It's uh, a pleasure to be with you this evening. Uh, first, I want to touch everybody or let everybody know, touch on the fact that we are midpoint through a strategic plan process, that we were professionally led. The institution, Villa Joseph Marie, was professionally led through a uh, strategic plan process. We just had a midpoint check-in at our last board meeting. And I'm um, pleased to report that uh, the strategic plan, which you can find on the website, uh, we're making good progress on all our 13 strategic initiatives. Uh, another area I'd like to uh, relay some good news is that the school's finances have never been in better shape. Um, a couple of things to look at is that you can look at the school's economic health based on year by year. Each school year stands on its own and we have been running uh, break-even to positive in, in each of the last six years, which I'm very happy to report. Uh, Long-term, the school is in exceptionally good shape. Uh, the endowment, the Villa Joseph Marie does have an endowment. 
I'm happy to say that it's gone from three and a half million to five and a half million these last six years. Um, and also, uh, it is a fact that Villa Joseph Marie owns Villa Joseph Marie. So the, the 60 acres of the beautiful campus that we have is owned by the school. So that gives us a lot of um, flexibility and a solid foundation for our future. Um, the other thing I'd like to touch on is the facility. Um, this is a, a school that was built starting in the 1950s, so we're continuing to polish it and upgrade it. Obviously, in uh, my time here, we've added a floor of classrooms in St. Joe's North. Uh, the student lounge was another upgrade, uh, and the crowning jewel uh, is the beautiful Performing Arts Center that we have that's really become an anchor for our campus, and I'm happy to say for the community as well. Uh, the next project that would have started if COVID had not happened is our STEAM hallway and the rebuild of the front of the school. Uh, so we'll have state-of-the-art STEM classrooms and facilities and a really wonderful indoor, outdoor, very modern, very collegiate student center that'll be anchor the whole school right in the middle on the front. So I'm excited to come back and to see just how wonderful that is. Um, all of our, our facility updates have coincided with some real good improvements on our curriculum. Um, you know, the, the ever-growing focus on STEM for our girls uh, has led to really wonderful college placement. I think it's safe to say that there's no limit for a Villa graduate uh, that she can pursue her dreams literally at the very best institutions in the world. We continue to uh, see dozens of girls get acceptances to top 50 institutions in our country. Uh, we're proud of that, and we're also proud that this year, the class of 2021, uh, the 97 members of which uh, scored a record over $26 million in scholarships. So we're really happy with that. Our board of directors uh, has also grown and been enhanced in their capability. Uh, they're active. First of all, we have a full complement of board directors now. We have many active committees, which was not the case uh, previously. Um, uh, one thing I'm particularly proud of is that our board has gone from one alum, Sister Margaret, who's still there, thank goodness, uh, and good for us. Um, but we have a total of four Villa alums bringing their professionalism and their experience and their passion for our school uh, into the leadership. So I would encourage you to leverage all that talent on our board of directors. Obviously, this is my uh, farewell, so I'm uh, uh, brokenhearted to be leaving this great community, but um, life doesn't turn out the way you think it is. I am just so unbelievably grateful to have been able to uh, pursue a vocation here at this institution because it is so mission-centric. Um, really, every decision that had to be made in my time here always went back to the mission. Um, you know, Mother Maria left behind an incredible legacy. The Sisters of St. Casimir, we have gotten to know them very well. Uh, I personally love them. I think each and every person in our community loves them. I'm so happy to have uh, two of them return to Philadelphia for a graduation Saturday at the Basilica. Uh, made my heart leap with joy to see our sisters back in the 215. And uh, I'm, I'm sure as the world improves in terms of its health, they will continue to be a presence uh, of goodness, of happiness, of direction for everybody in our community. So I wish you well. God bless you all. And I'm just down the road. I'll be, I'll be a very interested observer, and I'll be Villa's biggest fan in the future. Bye now. At this time, we will begin the question and answer portion for this evening. If you have any questions, once again, please submit them directly to the chat. I will read the questions out loud for everybody, and then one of the appropriate parties on the Zoom call will answer the question. At this point, I'm going to transition out of our slideshow and let you guys see me right now. All right, everybody. So I'm going to jump over to the chat to see what's come through. 
Uh, all right. Uh, so there was a question asked uh, about how long will the homeroom advisory period be? The homeroom advisory period will be approximately 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, right now, we have 10 minutes between each class that we use for the COVID social distancing safety protocol. So we're going to be able to shrink that down slightly. Just think if you took five minutes from each class period in that transition time, we have eight periods in the day, that's 40 minutes right there. So the homeroom advisory period will be an extended time frame. It also will be uh, scheduled every day, but on days when we have masses, on days when we have a special assembly, maybe the Halloween parade, that advisory period will be built into that time frame. So we'll still have special events, uh, but it will be very useful for clubs to be able to meet, for teachers to be able to have meetings, not only with other departments, but also with students. Uh, another question was asked, Will there still be Canvas conference options for a one-day student absence? So no, we are not going to utilize a virtual learning option. Uh, one of the challenges that this year obviously posed to all educators was simply the newness of figuring out the best way to instruct. I think many families that are on this call right now and many families that are listening can uh, attest to this. And I think almost every educator across the nation will say this. Teaching to both a virtual student and an in-class student in front of you at the same time is not an ideal scenario. But Canvas conferences are useful if we have a student that needs to meet with a teacher, maybe during a lunch period uh, because the student has an extended absence. Maybe the student's out with a concussion and wants to just you know, get a little bit caught up. Teachers can absolutely conference with that student, but for a normal one day absence, we will transition back to our original um, absentee policy where you can communicate with the teacher. They'll be happy to share what they're missing, but it is much more successful if the educator just teaches to those that are right there in front of them and we get caught up with the rest. Are there any additional questions uh, for us this evening? Uh, we have one other question that just came in related to COVID protocols for next year, and it just simply says, uh, when will we be updated? Uh, like last summer, I will be sure that by the middle of July, I put out some scheduled um, options. So whether it be that we have a few in person throughout July and August, I'll absolutely fill everybody in the community in on any COVID guidelines. Um, but our fingers are crossed that we're moving in the right direction. And we'll get back to that new sense of normalcy, as they're calling it. All right, so we have no other questions coming in tonight. Um, we put out to everybody like normal. If you have questions, please email us. If you wish to help and support, please email us. We will absolutely welcome it. Um, and then anything that you need in the meantime, there are several staff members that will be at Villa throughout the summer months. We are happy to help in any way. We wanna thank all of you from the bottom of our hearts for this past school year and we can't wait to have a successful 21-22 school year. This recording will be posted tomorrow um, and everybody will be able to access it. Again, have a great evening. Thank you for tuning in tonight and enjoy the summer months. Take care. <laughs>